Good evening, everyone. We are delighted to welcome you to the 14th season of Robobots. For those who don't know me, my name is Teresa Simons, and I am honored to serve as the Executive Director of the Alliance for Working Together Foundation, also known as AWT. Our history runs deep and wide with the roots laid down back in 2002. Thanks to Roger Sustar's vision, we brought together the community's manufacturers to tackle common challenges, primarily the need for skilled workers. Since then, AWT has grown into a powerful network of over 500 manufacturers, community and educational partners, united in promoting rewarding careers in manufacturing. In Northeast Ohio, we are uniquely positioned among more than 5,000 manufacturing companies. These organizations offer not just jobs, but fulfilling careers in clean, safe, and high-tech environments. If you're excited about being a part of something bigger, creating, innovating, and problem solving, then manufacturing is where your passion will find its home. We'd like to give a round of applause to our educators and advisors. Your guidance and dedication make it possible for these students to shine. Let's also extend our heartfelt thanks to our manufacturing partners. You provide the hands-on experience that is invaluable for these students. Your commitment to fostering the next generation of innovators enriches not only the students, but our entire community. Thank you. AWT Robobots is all about lighting that spark. Teams will partner with manufacturing companies from October through April, and together you will build a 15-pound robot. This year, you'll be competing in three key areas, the competition, documentation, and interview. To make your journey smoother, we've prepared a drive folder with all the necessary materials. These folders will be shared with you post kickoff. If you don't receive it, please let us know. As we all know, safety comes first. On the Friday before competition, we will have a safety check at Lakeland Community College, where your industry experts will vet your robots. This day is also your opportunity to impress a panel of judges with your process and documentation. This is what it all builds up to. Teams will compete in three minute head to head matches. This competition is double elimination format and the excitement on the day of the competition will be palpable, but let's not forget safety first and sportsmanship always. To keep everyone in the loop, we will post brackets on the Robobots website. So mark your calendars for the last Saturday in April and join us at Lakeland Community College for a day of high octane innovation and competition. Hi, my name is Julie Hildebrand. I'm with the Kenston Bots and I'm here to talk to you today about uh, document documentation for the high school bots and maybe some tips about how, how to do it uh, effectively and efficiently. So the first thing that I do that is not really on the list is doing a documentation checklist. This documentation checklist helps the team figure out where we are in our documentation ch checklist, or, um, you know, on our journey. So um, I always check on on this with my documentation manager, make sure they're all over it and just see where we are and that we've got everything uh, going and uh, finished in, in time and that sort of thing. So it's just a helpful thing to do. It's not necessary. Um, the first thing that is necessary are influences. Uh, this is the documentation of what uh, influenced the design of the bot. Did they watch battle bots? Did they, um, see what went on at the at the AWT Robobots last year. Um, did they get anything from maybe even junior bots if they're coming up as freshmen? Um, so this is um, when you should do this is in your initial brainstorming, keep track of this. This is something you can knock out early and be done with and you never have to look at it again. So it's really nice to, to just be done with it. Um, I, I always like to um, also talk about um, our bot from last year, what worked, what didn't, um, and also about the process, what worked with the process and what didn't work and what should be changed in the future. So it's a really good learning experience and, and look back for the team. And uh, this, as I said, BattleBots TV show, we, we watch it regularly. 
uh, looking for this kind of thing, and also the AWT RoboBots for sure. This is, next slide is an example of lessons learned that we've done in the past. Um, we found, you know, we always have timing problems. I'm sure everyone struggles with this. Um, we also have problems, you know, everyone has to commit if they're gonna stay on the, on, and design decisions must be made early. Um, so these are kind of things that, that we talked about, like, hey, we really need to do this better. So this is just an example of lessons learned. And then this is a, another slider showing more lessons learned. So you can take a look at it. Um, the next one is also an example. Um, this is, I think, from Beaumont, uh, identification of the problem. And so they used to um, this to um, look at their goals and see, you know, we want to build a mo the most destructive robot we can. How do we go about doing that? The next thing we need to talk about is team management. Um, this is the meeting minutes. Um, these are extremely important because number one, if you keep it till the end, you are way too late. Um, so it's something you really, really need to do every single meeting and have a different team member every time do it. It's just, you have to suck it up and do it. Um, um, I've, I've tried leaving it till the end and, and it's very <laughs> difficult to do it then. So, um, there is a template for this. And, um, if you see the next slide, you can see the, the, the template for that. Um, uh, just a couple tips. Um, I, uh, print out the meeting minutes, um, template, a blank template, and I have it laminated. And then I have a different person fill it out every single week. Um, and so we get who was, who was there, who was not there. And then I also have that person take at least three pictures of the team, uh, us working, you know, of the bot, whatever. And um, we save those into our Google Drive with a date on it. So you can easily go back and assemble the electronic version of your meeting minutes later on um, when you have all that. And then what I do with the laminated one is I take a picture of it and then I send it and um, to our Google Drive as well with the date. So um, I can, we can put that together and um, our doc manager can put it together in our, in our electronic format later on. But we at least have some sort of documentation that that meeting happened. It takes like 10 minutes out of someone's time and it's really pretty easy. Um, the next thing I'll talk about is material management. Um, this is a, uh, they wanna see how material was selected. How did you choose what, what, you, what you wanted to use? Why did you use titanium? Why did you lose aluminum? Why did you use steel? What, what, what choices did you have to make to um, get that content to get the, the the weight down, but keeping your strength good. Um, and also, um, uh, what I try and do is have a bill of material um, showing what is used where and um, how they all relate to each other. So quantity needed to build the bot, where it's used, is it on the drive system, is it on the, the weapon system, and then um, why that material was selected. And again, the judges are looking for the ability to analyze and know why you chose what you chose. The next piece is accounting and budget. Um, this is a listing of all the credits and debits. It's, it's pretty simple. And I would also suggest doing this as you go. Leaving this till the end is very painful as well. Hopefully you get, you have all of your receipts electronically, but um, have your doc manager uh, keep track of it and, um, or whomever. This one is, much, much, much less painful if you do it as you go. And the next slide shows an example of our budget, uh, just a little portion, but you can see a, a lot of it, um, I can also transfer, have the document, documentation manager transfer the this to also be used for the material management because it shows the where used, it shows uh, what you're using and that sort of thing. Time management, this is your project schedule. Um, it helps you, um, uh, I use the same template every single year and it just reminds you what you need to have done by when. 
Um, I know every January I start my panic mode and uh, we really want to have the bot built before January. We absolutely never get it done, but um, every year this is this is our plan. So the project schedule keeps the focus um, and the and the kids, we have them look at it all the time and say, okay, where are we on this? Are we doing okay? Be sure to list all the major things, your brainstorming of the bot, the, you know, completing the design of the bot, ordering the parts, um, building it, testing it, uh, retesting it, reworking it, troubleshooting it, all those things need to be on there. And then also for sure, uh, make sure your documentation management is on there as well. Uh, this is an example of um, a project schedule. Um, this is a Gantt chart and it can show you just on a high level where you are and where you need to be with um, all your project stuff. And I will say that um, this is used all the time in industry, um, we talked to the project manager for the beginning uh, or for the implementation of the Star Wars exhibit at Disney World. And he also used this same format of, Gantt, of a Gantt chart and his, his skills with project management and his experience with project management was exactly the same as our bots experience. It was just at a much larger scale. So, um, Project management is, is, is a really great learning tool for, for the kids to take on to um, in, in their next lives in the industry. Research method. This is, um, this is similar to influences, but it's really what research was done to decide on a bot. And you can also do this at the fairly beginning. So get it out of the way and then you don't have to worry about it again. Um, just list all the research that was done, any YouTube sites you went to, um, any BattleBot TV shows you watched, any AWT RoboBot um, battles you watched, and the results of any brainstorming sessions. So uh, we have a brainstorming session at the very beginning um, where we decide on it, on our design, and this is this is what is the result of it. That's all I had. Thank you. This is Julie. Hi, my name is Joshua Lining. I was the previous team captain for the Mentor High 2022 Robotics League. So one of our struggles with building the robot would be um, just sourcing out all the parts, getting all the parts that we needed to um, machined in time, and then just getting all of that into the robot and just making sure that we had everything on time. One of the best things with being the team captain is just seeing your team work on the robot during the competition. It's probably one of the most rewarding feelings you'll ever get. Hi, I'm Colin Gus from GNT Manufacturing, and I'm here to tell you about our process is going through the RoboBots, getting us from start to finish for AWT for the competition. It all starts off with the kickoff meeting which you're probably present in right now, looking at, watching this video. We'll give you a brief idea on how we do this at GNT, what our process is that's gotten us to the competition with robots that are built, running, and ready to go. What we usually start off with is, we start off with our own kickoff meeting. We get the team together and we all talk, we get to know one another. Usually we do this, we'll have it as a pizza party so we can all get to know one another. It makes it a lot easier for everyone to just have a meal, talk to one another. And we start to focus on some of the points at that time of where do we want to go? Are we going to use the bot from last year, depending on if it's a new team that's come to us or teams that we've already had in the past? The other thing that we do at this meeting is, is we try to divide up the team and find out who's interested in what. Do you have people that like to build and put things together? Some students may be more interested in the CAD CAM and the software and the development side. So we try to focus on what everyone would like to do and who has the skill sets at that point in time that are already doing like items that we need in our RoboBots build. So we start off in October and the build goes all the way until the beginning of April. We usually try to have a working bot before that, at least a month before the competition. Now sometimes with deadlines, as everybody knows, Everything doesn't always go as planned. 
There's been times we've been scrambling at the end, making parts, and we always try to tell the students to keep in mind, it's not time to panic. We're in manufacturing and we're used to this world. So what we end up doing is we end up pulling it all together. We'll bring the students in, we'll set them up on the machines, we'll let them machine the parts side by side with us and our team members. So that way then we can complete the bot for the competition date. Now that's how the end of it usually looks. But the way it goes through the entire process for us is our start is we get a design. We always set our goal for our design to be done somewhere around about Thanksgiving. And then the final idea for machining, knowing what material sizes we need, what machines we're gonna to need to use at our facility, and who on our team needs to be present to help us machine these parts at that time. We try to have that before everybody breaks for Christmas. So when we come back from Christmas, we hit the ground running and we start machining the parts for the RoboBot. At that time, we will also order all of the components we need, motors, batteries, any electronics that we need, screws, and components that we're not gonna manufacture at that time. Usually before the Christmas break, I'll usually order all of the material for the RoboBot, whatever the materials should be needed to construct the actual frame and chassis for the bot. Once we get back, we then keep track of the list as we go along through January, making sure we check everything that came in. COVID's made this a lot of fun because we've had parts that have strayed all the way out until March. Again, we tell everyone don't panic. We look for other sources and we'll double order items. Now we ended up with a lot of items last year that didn't come in, even from suppliers that are usually two days, like McMaster Car. We had to source belts from other locations and other places at that point in time. So the thing to do is to reach out between teams or if anyone has a question, definitely reach out to me. I can give you some of the places we've sourced items and other RoboBots manufacturers that have sponsored teams can also tell you where they've gotten the items. After we get all the items in and we get the bot machined, that's when we put it together and find out how well the design works, how well the design performs. And usually we will ask for some cage time so we can bring it into the cage to see how it performs in the cage. The other thing that always seems to hang everybody up is the electronics. The electronics and the wiring always seems to be, for us in the years, has always been the hardest part. Meeting the voltage requirements, getting the receivers, getting the remotes to talk to one another have always seemed to be a big hang up for everyone. Programming. So the thing to do is to find the people that have already done that. And we've reached out to some other people. I have a friend of mine that does a lot of stuff for a drone league. And I've reached out to him and I've asked him to help us. And he's put together some packets and pamphlets for us, for our teams. So that way then they can go ahead and program the remotes the way that they need to be programmed. If anybody needs anything like that, please reach out. We can share that information as well with you. Other than those few pit holes that you run into with the electronics and your ordering of your materials, it usually goes as a pretty smooth process. As long as you set milestones, you stay to your milestones as you go along by making sure that you have your processes put into place. Make sure your process is to have a date for when the design is finalized. Now by finalized, that means just the team has voted that this is what our final design is going to look like. We might have to make modifications later to make things fit, to make it work. And the next day you have to have is when do you have to have all of your materials in by and who's checking off all the materials to make sure they're ordered and they're in. Again, we try to have all that done as soon as we get back in the first or second week of January. We start machining as soon as the material comes in. So we usually start machining at the end of January, beginning of February, based on current lead times for materials. After that, we start putting everything together as it starts coming off the machines. So that way then if we have to go back, this fit and function doesn't work as it works in the digital realm, we go ahead and then we go back and modify it. That way then we have a bot that's functional and it works when we get to the competition. Lastly, during all these milestones, we usually try to have a regrouping. Again, as I said earlier, one of our favorite things to do is we will usually have a pizza party at every one of our milestones just so we can regroup. That way then we can sit down, we can talk, it's not a working day, and we just get together and we talk about where we are with the bot, what are we missing from the bot, what are the problems, and where do we need to go to solve those problems to move forward. And once we have the functioning bot and the teams put together, 
We then name the bot and we go ahead and we order the t-shirts and get the t-shirt design put together. Again, this is something that also has to be done pretty much by March. After we get to that point, it's hopefully smooth sailing and just building the bot and only having to troubleshoot the electronics for the last month. I wish you all well and good luck in the competition and good luck building the bot. Feel free to reach out to any of the members of AWT that sponsor the bots and ask them any questions that you need. You can reach out to us at any time. My email address is on our AWT page as I sit on the eboard for AWT. You can reach out and ask any questions. I usually will respond within 24 hours if I'm around my email. That way then, if you have any questions, your questions will be answered and everything will be all set and hopefully it'll be smooth sailing, especially if you're a new sponsor. We thank you for your time. Thank you all for being here today. Let's make this RoboBot season the best ever.